Staying on foreign policy and the State Department, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is preparing for a trip to Latin America. Now, part of his latest call for new leadership in Venezuela. It comes after he recently told Congress that the U.S. also plans to turn up the heat on Iran. RT's Rachel Blevins has all the details. Days after the Trump administration announced that it is designating Iran's Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that the U.S. will continue to increase pressure on Iran. Well, he did not give specific details about whether the administration would continue to give sanctions waivers to countries that import oil from Iran. Pompeo did say he can assure the rest of the world that Trump will continue to ratchet up the pressure on Iran so that their behavior will change. Pompeo also defended the unprecedented label of terrorist organization on Iran's Revolutionary Guard during a hearing before the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations. We recognize them as terrorists in the same way we do other terrorist groups around the world. When we see them, we try to call them out as best we can and as quickly as we can. While Republican Senator Ted Cruz claimed that the U.S. should do more to prevent Iran's government from profiting off of oil exports, Senator Rand Paul took a different approach. I am troubled that the administration can't unequivocally say that uh, you haven't been given power. I can tell you explicitly you have not been given power or authority by Congress to have war with Iran. And in any kind of semblance of a sane world, you would have to come back and ask us. While it is not clear exactly how the U.S. plans to increase pressure on Iran, it is also moving to put more pressure on Venezuela. The Trump administration has been vocal about its support for opposition leader Juan Guaido, even as his country's military continues to stand behind elected President Nicolas Maduro. Pompeo is set to visit four nations in Latin America, including Colombia's town on the border with Venezuela, on a trip highlighting the plight of Venezuelan refugees and calling for Maduro to step down. When asked about Venezuela, Pompeo called Maduro a true threat to U.S. national security based on the support his government has received from Russia. Now it remains to be seen just how far the U.S. will go to increase pressure on countries like Venezuela and now Iran as some of the top officials in the Trump administration continue to claim that all options are on the table. In Washington, Rachel Blevins, RT. For more on this, we turn to former U.S. diplomat Jim Jotras. Thank you so much for joining us, Jim, on it. So what do you think the U.S. is actually going to be able to achieve with their approach towards Iran at this point? I don't know if they're going to achieve anything. It's clear what they want to do. They want, they want regime change, and they'll tighten the screws any way they can. Uh, and uh, we'll see. And, and, and as the, the administration officials have said repeatedly, nothing is off the table. Um, look, uh, I, I think we have to put this in context of what we happened with uh, Mr. Assange today. Um, you and I both supported Donald Trump during the 2016 election, and I wanted to believe he would give us something different than what his opponent would have given us. And unfortunately, I think uh, Assange is the cherry on top of the Sunday that the transformation into George W. Bush is pretty much complete. Um, I think he's a wholly owned subsidiary now of the neocons he's appointed to his administration, and I'm very, very worried what comes next in Iran, also in, in Venezuela. Well, then they have a lot of things in common. The U.S. has long claimed that Iran is the sponsor of terrorism and recently described the Iran military as a terrorist organization, labeling it. First time ever that I think the United States government has done this. Is there any evidence, actual tangible evidence, for the Iranian association, uh, you know, assertion that the U.S. military is a sponsor of terrorism? Because that was their response when President Trump did these actions earlier this week. I don't know if the U.S. military is a sponsor of terrorism, but the CIA certainly is. I mean, we <laughs> going all the way back to the Afghan war, but but also in Bosnia and Kosovo and Libya and Syria, we have been in bed with Al-Qaeda and its offshoots. We're still protecting Al-Qaeda in Idlib today. Of course we are a sponsor of terrorism. For us to say the Iranians are sponsoring terrorism, look, a lot of countries use terrorists as means of policy, so there's a certain pot and kettle black issue here. But for us to say Iran is the prime sponsor of terrorism when we and our friends, particularly the Saudis, are, are front and center on that, is, 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 it's, it's, it's grotesque, actually. Okay, so how risky is this escalation? that we're playing with right now? I think it is extremely risky because whatever you think of the Iranian government and the, the Islamic Republic and so forth and the, the Revolutionary Guard Corps, um, it is a state entity what, by declaring a terrorist group that's coming awfully close to declaring war on part of a government of a foreign country. That, doesn't, that, that sends a very militant signal.
Right, and that's that's never a good thing. Okay, so I want to shift gears right now. Recently, Vice President uh, Mike Pence went to the UN, confronted the Venezuelan ambassador, telling him he just needed to go back to Caracas and he shouldn't be here. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is now headed to Latin America to also kind of drum up support uh, for the opposition. What do you think that either one of them are going to be able to accomplish with this sort of talk, and where is it going with Venezuela? Well, again, uh, I don't know if they will accomplish, but it's clear what they want to do. They want regime change. They will use being short of war if they can. They tried to get the military to turn against Maduro. That doesn't seem to have worked. They had this little stunt with the humanitarian so-called convoy on the border. That didn't seem to work. There are many other things they could do. We could see maybe snipers or some kind of a false flag violence thing. Uh, maybe we will see some kind of a guerrilla force operating out of Colombia or Brazil. We could even see something like an air campaign like we saw in Libya in 2011 or worse comes to worse. 2003 in Iraq. I don't think they want to go that far, but it's a question now that evidently the same old crowd is in charge of our policy. How, how far will these people go? Well, the Venezuelan ambassador responded yesterday by throwing out the, the Monroe Doctrine, how that was dated back, you know, for dealing with slavery and Europeans, and that it, that was the U.S. was still abiding by for it. Does the Monroe Doctrine still have any place right now in foreign policy for the U.S. today? I, I think it should have a, uh, a place in the sense that we want to tell other powers to stay out of our hemisphere, but the understanding would, of course, be as we stay out of other powers' face in their neighborhoods. Uh, we get out of the Baltic and the Black Sea uh, confronting the Russians, get out of the South China Sea confronting the Chinese. Are will we willing to do that? No, of course not. So, of course, we, we are shooting the legs out from the Monroe Doctrine itself by doing that. Well, Jim, thank you, like always, for bringing your excellent analysis to this thank and you. explaining it a little bit better than the other people do. Thank You're you. the best. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.